So we'll do a problem like you're saying, but I just want to get the general idea. We'll do the one that's in the textbook. Um, if this was one of my equations, and normally decimals are not as bad as fractions, but they're like a close second to how well they're like. Uh, you don't have to do what I'm about to do, but you can. if I can clear fractions from an equation, I can certainly clear decimals, because decimals are fractions. Are we all cool with that statement? Because, of course, 0.02 is just what fraction? 2 over 100. So decimals are just fractions where the denominators happen to agree with our number system. Our number system is base 10. We're not sure why, but more than likely it's because we got 10 of these damn things, right? If we had, we had 8 of them, don't take your thumb away, you don't evolve. If we had 8 of them, we would have had a base 8 number system. Holy shit, what would that look like? Take my 120 class and you'll find out. But... Um, what can you do with this if you wanted to? Multiply Yeah, exactly. Multiply. This would only need to be multiplied by 10, mm -hmm. but you always multiply the highest amount who, who needs the most. And there's some of them that have to move twice. So if I multiply by 100, the decimal just moves twice. So I'll get 12x minus 140y equals 2, and blah, 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 blah. And then I could divide by 2, for example, right? You guys sit mind with me on that? General, anytime you have decimals in your systems, you can fill them. Hey, hey. Go ahead, please. Yeah. A little loud there. It's a little loud here. All right. So, now that we've talked about section 11.1, and you even have a handout that shows you exactly the recipe of how to do them, Section 11.2, if you haven't looked at it yet, is immediately gratifying. You don't have to wait very long at all. 11.2 is the word problems. Now, most of you guys, if you look back at that, even if you made mistakes on it, that hot dog and burger and soda and Coke problem, most of you, I think, would agree that it was relatively easy to set that up. I don't think, I think most of the trouble was with how to solve it. But that's because you didn't think it was the same kind of problem, and it totally is. You just eliminate no problem. So that's the kind of word problems you're going to get in here. Just to show you, I'll do one like he's talking about back there. Number, number three on 11.2, are you doing word problems? Yes. Oh, okay, number three, 11.2. Yeah. Okay, so number three, 11.2. All right, we'll start there. We'll start with a nice one. And then we'll go to a, a little more ugly looking one with some decimals in it. Um, let me put this up here if you don't have your book. Because I want you guys to try to set up the equation first. I got answers that equal to the 
myself. But in the back of the book, is my answer is wrong, but my answer is still equal to itself. But do your answers do everything they're supposed to? They're not only supposed to sum up to be something, they're supposed to do a couple other things, I right? Think so. Did, ah. Because, I mean, very quickly, how many things add to be four? How many things add to be four? Infinite number of things, right? 1.739 and whatever you add to that to make four, right? So forth. Uh, but how many of these things also subtract to be two? No. No. They have to do both. So, for example, uh, 4 and 0 add to be 4. 3 and 1 add to be 4. 2 and 2 add to be 4. Right? But which one of those subtract to be 2? 3 and 1. So that's the only one that does both. That's another way of looking, not just graphically, but you just look at it like this. That's why there's one answer to this system. That has an infinite number of solutions. That has an infinite number of solutions. But there's only one thing that does what both of them say. That's why we get one answer, and not always. They don't always agree, but here they agree at one place. All right, cool. <coughs> so, take a second and see if you can set up the equations. You said number three? <coughs> number three. Wow. Remember, what's the first step in a word problem? X plus y Screen. Plus y. And the second step is identify the parts, right? If you just start doing X, Y, and Z, then it gets a little confusing on the next thing. You've got to identify, well, who's the first number? X. Beautiful. So say X equals first, Y equals second, and then W, no, you can use Z. Doesn't matter. You can use whatever letters you want. You guys understand? Because then it's a lot easier to translate. You first translate the names of the English things into math, X, Y, Z. And then you can translate the sentences into equations. So it really is translating from one language to another. Right? If only Google could do that, that would be amazing. Type that into Google and then it gets you the equations. Can you imagine? That'll be after you're done with school. That'll come out. I said the TI came out after I was done. Now that I've got that, the first one didn't even matter what I called who. How do I write the first equation? X plus one plus C plus one. Yeah, the sum of three. And of course, like we just discussed earlier, there is an infinite infinity of numbers that make that work. Uh, and actually, it's an infinite infinity of infinities that make that work. Holy crap. How do I write the second one? Twice the first minus the second. Okay, twice the first. See, now it's easier that I got them identified. Minus the second, careful, minus the second, why? Not minus twice the second, just minus the second, is two less than the third. Careful. Z minus two. Right, it's two less than the third. Third is Z. Third is Z, so then it's Z minus two. Not two minus Z. That's Z less than two. Shit. So that less than, you always have to turn it around. How many notes are part? First equation, second equation, what's the third equation? The third is, the third is, the second minus three times the first. The second minus three times the first, kick ass. I love it. <coughs> you would love it. Now here's, now, all right, let me see if you guys can handle this. The handout I gave you with the uh, how to solve a system of three equations. You with me? 
that handout was the buy the book first way that you do them and you do them until you're comfortable with them. Then you start to realize that there are problems like the one we did earlier where both X and Y cancel. And you don't freak out. You actually go, oh, thank God, that makes it easier. I know what one of them is now. It should make it easier. So then you've got to realize how to do it if something weird like that happens. But then there's always more than one way to do these things. I don't know if you guys, if I know that Z is Y minus 3X, then you plug it in. could I just put that in for that? Right. So that would be like substitution. And then I have two equations. With two, so it's always a little bit difficult for a teacher to realize when to start bringing in other ways to do things because there's always some students that are like, I hate this way. If only there was another way. And then I, I took too long to tell them. Or just be like, don't tell me, oh, I, I'm totally confused now. There's too many ways to do this shit. Right? So I, it's always weird to figure out when to do that. Uh, so I could bring these over, bring this over, and then kill X twice or whatever like we would normally. Or what's funny is this kind of what might give you the idea, oh, I could plug that in for there, and I could plug that in for there. So you want to try that way? Or you wanna... yeah. Sure, man, why not? All right, so what happens to the first equation? So first I just plug this in here. So put this in place of z. So I get x plus y plus y minus 3x equals 26 comma 3. And on the second equation, it becomes 2x minus y equals y minus 3x minus 2. Let me stop there for a second. Is that cool? So uh, there was a z here. So I replaced it with what it is. There was a z here. I replaced it with what it is. So this is the equivalent of the substitution method for three variables. But you do have to eventually realize what you're allowed to do. The more you know you're allowed to do, the more flexibility you have, the better it is. But if you're really new to this, it's not better. It's worse because then you try to do three things at the same time. And then that's not going to work. So the first equation becomes negative 2x plus 2y equals 26. And the second equation becomes 5x minus 2y equals negative 2. Well, that's kick-ass. That set itself up for us. All right, what's nice about that? The y's just want to die. They want to kill us. I'm like, okay, no problem, we'll kill you. 3x equals 24, so x is... Sorry, say again? Why didn't you just add the y from that side to the other side? Oh, from here? To there? You the y and made it negative 2y, right? Had to. If I add y, I'll get two y's over there. No, what if from the other side? Oh, if I, all right, if I add y... I can totally do that. Sure, why not? But, but. Maybe I'm confusing myself. Hold on. Sorry. That's all right. So, why did I do that? Real quick, brief. Don't I want to end up with x's and y's equals a number? That's kind of like the standard form. Do I have to? No. But that's the way I'm used to seeing it. So, the x's and y's kind of line up. So, I'm just moving things that my x's and y's are all on this side. So, I got to move those over so they're all on this side. I think I'm cutting it short and solving for x. On one equation oh, the two. gotcha. And then you could do substitution, but yeah. which is fine. But elimination is sort of like more time. often used. Okay. All right. That's my job is to confuse you. Don't, don't take my job away. All right. So then, so is that, does that make sense for everybody? And again, I said this earlier, but you could add this over. You could kill Z twice. I mean, you could do it the way on the handout I gave you. You better still get the same answers either way. Here I get x is 8, right? Good, and then I can immediately go here, right? And get uh, negative 2 times 8 plus 2y equals 26. Write dominoes, now you start falling back. You guys with me? The minute you know the value of a variable, you can go plug it wherever the hell you want to. Well, I'm going to plug it somewhere where there's only one other variable so I can get that variable. Then I know two things. Yay. Right? It's like we're the detectives and we're coming closer to the murderer. Right? So then it's negative 16. If I add 16 over, good. So y is 
21. If I know x and y, I can figure out what z is. Or actually, right here it's even better. So we use the third one. Z, z equals 21 minus 3 times 8. 21 minus 24. Negative 3. Crazy. Is that so? Yeah, I got it now. Okay, but you didn't get that before, right? No, it's a little like, bit. It's because the second equation, I wrote 2x minus, I wrote something else. I okay, think. gotcha. Of course, that's the other. See, in 11 1, it sucks if you write it down wrong. 11 2, you've got to translate it correctly, and then we all know that that's not always easy to do. So obviously on a test, I'm not going to give you a whole bunch of these. Because that would be kind of evil. Because right? you can get bogged down in these. The most important thing on this kind of problem is to show me that you know the process of how to solve it. So if you were unlucky and you put it negative here or something, and you do everything, you do all the right steps, and you keep coming out with these numbers that don't work, like you keep saying... Jamie is negative 11 years old. You're like, I'm pretty sure that can't be true. <laughs> I'm going to give you most of the points to show me. You know, I've said this before, but if you show me the right process, you know how to do the process. Because there's so many little places you can make mistakes here. I have to be kind of lenient. Because I, I make mistakes. Hell, if you're human, you won't make mistakes somewhere in this kind of thing. So if you don't make mistakes anywhere, I'm going to have to test your pedigree. See what's up with you. Which one? 21? 21? Is that what I want? Well, sort of. I want to look at 13. 21 is nifty, but I want to let people try it out. Yes? For this problem, do you plan to answer for 1, 2, 3, or do you plan to answer for the third problem? Oh. You know how you get your answer? Now watch, real quick. Yeah, the minute I get Z, it's got to be the same thing that any of these would tell me because they all have to agree. So if I check my work, I can check it. If I plug these back in here, 8 plus 21 plus Z equals 26. You with me? So I get 29 plus Z. So I subtract 29, I get Z equals negative 3. Same thing we got there, right? So if I can check my work doing that, but I don't have to do it to get the answer because they're all going to tell me the same thing because they all have to agree. I'm finding the point where they all agree. Cool. But it's a nice thing to do to check your work. Right. Well, it sucks if you make a mistake here and you think you're wrong when you're really right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's look at, uh, let's try 13. You guys try to set this one up. Go away. Bam. Let's see if we can make 13 and put it over there. All right. If you don't like Starbucks, you could put coffee bean and tea leaf there if you want, or 7 Eleven if you're really high end. This is the kind of problem where people are like, holy shit, there's a lot of information. How many things are there that I don't know? Uh, three. Three. three things, right? Uh, yeah. I don't know how many cups of each size, and there's three sizes. So what are my variables going to be? Okay, so X will represent what? 12 ounce. 12 ounce, okay, cool. Y will represent 16, and Z will represent 20. Which used to be known as small, meaning large, but you never know how these. Um, 
So there's three things I don't know. There must be three separate pieces of information that give me. There is. One thing to tell me is the total number. This is going to be the easy equation. The total is always the easy equation. If x, y, and z are the number of each type, what equation do I get to make it equal 55? x plus y plus z equals 55. That kicks x. So there's almost always, not always, almost always the first equation is just a total equation. a plus b plus c equals 10, whatever. You just add them all up and it's a total of something. So that's easy. The second idea is this. And that relates to the sizes of each, right? So, 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 so beautiful. 12 ounces for every 12 ounce cup. So it's 12x. If I sold two 12 ounces, that's 24 ounces, right? So the ounce equation has to have ounces. So it'll be 12 times x plus 16 times y plus 20 times z equals 144. And, and anytime you can divide the whole equation by something you do, and you'll see that all those coefficients can be divided by something. Okay, Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you. And there's a 6 there, so it's got to equal 6 times this. Thank you. I didn't even see that. Yeah. I'm too close to this giant thing. So 6 of these, so total of whatever that multiplies out to. Now, what's the third equation going to involve? Yeah, good. So the third equation is a money equation. So now you've got to have money, money, money. So it'll be a buck 65 per x, so 1.65x. Plus 1.85y plus 1.95z equals 9965. So the second one, you multiply everything by 6? Not everything, sorry. So, so the second one will look like this. The second one would say, uh, so it's 12 ounces are the x, 16 ounces are the y, 20 ounces are the z, and that'll equal a total of six of these. So that'll equal six times 144. So however many ounces can a total is six of these. Say so again? Oh, thank you. All right. 864. And then everything should be at least divisible by four. Well, uh, four. Notice something. When you're trying to figure out what to divide by, do you see how these numbers are kind of nice, but you can always do this. How far apart are these two numbers? Four. four. So I try four. Four doesn't work, then a two is a, is a factor of four. So if I said what number goes into both uh, 108 and 117, how far apart are they? Nine. So if nine goes into one of them, nine has to go into both of them. I don't know if you guys understand that about numbers. And how do I know that 9 goes into that? 1 plus 0 plus 8 is? 9. It's so weird to me that this used to be known and now like nobody knows this. If you add the digits and a number and it comes out to be a multiple of 9, 9 goes into it. So 1 plus 1 plus 7 is? 9. So 9 goes into it. If it comes out to be a multiple of 3, 3 goes into it. Now don't overdo it. If it comes out to be a multiple of 7, no. 7 doesn't have a rule to it. Right? Every, almost every number has a rule to it. Five, you guys know the rule for five. If it ends in five or zero. The rule for two is if it's even. Rule for three is just like the rule for nine. The rule for six is if it's even and it adds up to be some multiple of three. It's got to be both. And uh, the rule, who do I leave out? The rule for four is neat. At least you guys are all looking at me. I know I do this every now and again. This has nothing to do with what we're doing, but I just got to tell you what I'm thinking about. Uh, the rule for four is uh, as long as the last two digits are divisible by four, the whole damn thing is divisible by four. And that's, that is because four goes into 100. So then, of course, four goes into 108. So all four has to do is go into the last two digits, and then it goes into the whole damn number. And that's enough of that. See, that used to be something people knew. And then they change math to be stupid. And then they don't teach you shit in your high school anymore. They just say, push this button, watch something happen. Ah, sorry. <laughs>
I used to joke when I was 20 years younger about sounding like this when I was 20 years older, and here I am. All right. So what the hell were we doing? Oh, yeah, so I can divide all that by 4. So what do we got? We got x plus y plus z equals, what was it? 55. If you divide this by 4, you get 3x plus 4y plus uh, 5z equals something. Four. what is that? Uh, 2, 16, yeah. Thank you. And then 3 was... The money, so to be a buck sixty-five per x. So again, yeah, I took this equation and just divided both sides by four. Just to make it easier. Just to, yeah, smaller numbers in this kind of problem is always good, right? So if you think about it, you can divide. If you don't think about it, you're still going to make it work. You just got a little bit bigger numbers to work with. It's not the end of the world. And then a buck sixty-five per that plus a buck. What was it? Eighty-five. Per this plus a buck ninety-five per this gives you the total ninety-nine sixty-five, and that's the one you can multiply by if you want. Yes. If you mess with one equation like that, where you divide by four, doesn't that change the answer for the whole thing? No, hell no. That's the fundamental idea of equations. If I have the equation two x equals eight and then divide both sides by two, did I change the answer? No, four still works in there, right? So whatever would have worked in here still does because I did I divided both sides by four. So whatever x y z would work still works. Just like well four works here. Well so does four work there. Good. That's a good question. I want to make you feel better. But yeah, it does not. Thank God. It's just a fundamental property of equations. So how would you go about solving this then? You would. I think most of us would want to do this, right? Be careful, you can't just erase decimals, but I would multiply them all by 100, so that would, is that cool? Your hands are like, my math teacher said. No, 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 they didn't. <laughs> all right, let's see. And now, do you notice, could I do something similar with the third equation that I did with the second? I could divide the third equation by five. So let's see. Shit? No C, shit. 33? It's like we're not even solving it. This would be 37, right? Is that right? Yeah. And then 39. And then that divided by 5. Who knows? Who is it? Yeah, we're divided by 5, right? Yeah. This is true. Uh, let's see, 35, 7, so 193. <laughs> 1930, am I off by a decimal? Okay. I can look with that. 30. Do it again? 1993? 1993? Okay, I was off by a 9. Alright. Is that right? That's with me. Oh, yeah, because. Uh, so if this was 10,000, 5 would have gone in that 2,000 times. So I was saying 200. It was 2,000. How far away from 10,000 is this? How far away from 10,000 is this? 35. 35 divided by 5 is 7. So I've got to subtract 7 from what the answer would have been. I end up at 1993. And you're like, i got a calculator. Shut up. <laughs> All right. So now that's, that's old news. So now between these three, you're just going to have to deal with the, the numbers. It's too bad. Uh, you pick a letter to kill twice and you do it. Right? It's not going to be pretty. But the numbers being a little bit bigger should not be, you, sh you should feel bad if, you, if that's the reason you're having trouble. Just to be mean for a second. You know the process, you've got a calculator, big deal, the numbers get a little big, who cares? You know what to do. So if I, like, the first equation is really nice, I'm going to use him twice. Which letter do you want to kill? Z. You guys don't like Z. It's funny. I would have picked X just because the numbers are smaller here, right? I'd have smaller multipliers, but... You know, whatever. So then I can multiply this by negative three and then add it to two. All right, finish. Some weird math old compound. I didn't care if nobody got that. I like that. Keep that for myself. Methyl compound.
Is that what you guys got for the first little equation you Yeah. So now if I take this guy, multiply him by negative Larry Bird, negative 33. So negative 33x minus 33y minus 33z equals whatever the hell negative 33 times that is. anything in class that you don't know why you did it, right? What is that? 1993. So then my X's die like I wanted them to. If you wanted to, you could divide this by two. You see that? Yeah. No, I don't feel like it. it's too much work. So I just take this guy and multiply by one. Three. Yeah, I can multiply by one. Negative three. Good. So negative three y. Somebody with me? I don't want to leave you behind. How are we doing? Numbers look different. Process 
doesn't give a shit. Right? The process doesn't care. Till two of the same thing, and then you can use what's left over. Uh, so now multiply this by negative three so that the z's will cancel. Uh, um, Thank you. Five, three, three, what? Five, negative three. Oh, I get the other one. Sorry. <laughs> so then you get the, you get the, twelve puberty. Y equals twenty. Five. Yeah. Right. So, so if Y is twenty five, what's the next letter I could find? Z. I like it. You guys look depressed. I'm sorry. The whole row. I just crushed your whole being. Good. I fulfilled my purpose. So Y is 25. I can go back here and I can figure out what Z is. Subtract 25, you get 26, divide by 2, you get 13. Is it cool? Alright. And then now that I know Y and Z, I can go back here. This is the best equation ever. And just fill it in and figure out what x is. So it'll be x plus. I don't know what x is, but I know that y is 25. And I know that z is 13. Say again? 13. 13? Oh, you're talking about the answer. Yeah, so if I took 38, subtract it, x looks to be 17. Now, this is a word problem, so what I've done is not good enough. X represented the 12 ounce cups, right? So you say 17, 12 ounce. Uh, 25, 16 ounce. And 13, 20 ounce. Uh, subtract 25, you get 26, divide by 2, just solve it together. X, Y, Z equals 55, but it's nothing to do with what you have. I got negative 9, 77, negative 13, but I know it's, it's not the answer. Oh, I'm sorry? What happened? You know that first equation, X plus Y plus Z? Yes. My negative nine seventy seven negative thirteen equals fifty five. Oh, but it, I'm, I'm sure it's not the answer. If that's not yeah. No. Yeah. Remember, this is evil. So truly <laughs> check. To truly check your answer to a system of equations, your answer must work in all three, because that's the idea. There's an infinite number of things that work in any one of them. In fact, there could be an infinite number of things that work in any two of them. So to make sure that you're the right answer, you got to check all three of them. Yeah. And obviously, you know, like negative in this case would mean I brought some coffee in and I gave it to them. That would be negative, right? Instead of me getting coffee, I gave it to them. I don't want this shit. <laughs> yes? Are you sure? Oh, is that X equals 4? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, that just confused me too, but that was just a side note. Yeah, I do oh, that. yeah, that was a. Uh, that's right. Sorry. Somebody had a question, I just put that as an example. So I, I, I know I'm not the most organized teacher. I never will be, because it just doesn't go with the way I do things. But yeah, bring that up when there's a little leftover shit from something. That was just a quick example. All right. This is 11.2. So 11.1 and 11.2 are really the exact same thing. Just 11.2 does not give you the equations. You have to set them up yourself. And then you attack it the same way you did 11.1. And do you now agree with me? That was kind of gross sounding, but wasn't it relatively easy to set the equations up? I like the look I just got from Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you have? You're good? Okay. All right. All right. So, we're going to talk about 
matrices now. Oh shit. Alright. Uh, tell me, this, with the finished product up here, that is disgusting, right? If I had written this before you came in the room and I said, write it down and learn from it, you, you would have completely been okay to slap me in the face. So what sucks about this is bookkeeping, uh, X's and Z's and Y's, and making sure you got the Y is for, you put it where the Y is. You kind of with me? I mean, there's a lot of bookkeeping here. Um, the only thing that really, really matter is, like, why did I multiply this by negative three? Because there's a three there, right? So all that matters, truly, are the coefficients. As long as I have my X's in a row, my Y's in a row, my Z's in a row, the variables don't matter or shit. So matrices is an attempt to just focus on the parts that matter, the coefficients. And let me tell you this. We're going to do some uh, matrices for systems of two equations. And for systems of two equations, matrices don't make sense. They're just too much. They're overkill. You don't need them. Three equations, it's about equal. The amount of work is about equal. But the minute, if I had four equations, can you imagine x, y, z, w? Which there are some of the homework, actually. Matrices don't give a shit how many more terms and equations you add in. They just do the same thing every time. But if I was going to try to do four or five or six variable stuff by hand like this, I want you to realize... Let me take you down. If I had four variables, x, y, z, w, I'd have to kill three variables out of three of them. Then between those three, I have to kill two of them. And then, uh, so can you, uh, that's a lot of freaking work, right? Screw that. So matrices is an attempt to come up with a process that will be the, about the same level of easiness no matter how big my system gets. And if you're trying to do something like predict the weather, how many variables are involved in the weather? A lot, right? Which is why weathermen normally enjoy where they live if they live here, because they can say the same damn thing just about every day, and they're right, right? And if you think rain's gonna come, just say there's not gonna be rain, and then most of the time you'll be right, right? Um, But in other parts of the world, weatherman's the suckiest job in the world, because no equation you have will have all of the variables involved as it needs it. You gotta, with me? So, there is a, the, the real physical world analogy of this is every one of these variables could represent like the, the, the temperature, the, the, the altitude, the, 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 I don't know what else, I'm not obviously not a meteorologist. Whatever involves the involves, right? Humidity, the, the wind speed, or the, 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 uh, how much hot air was being blown out of the math teacher's mouth, stuff like that. Um, so, Let's start with just what the hell a matrix is, and then we'll build from there. Now, wait, while I'm thinking about it, have any of you heard of something called synthetic division? Yeah. A few of you guys. Okay, cool. You have. Awesome. Sorry. Because matrices does the same thing it does. It gets the variables out of the way just so you can focus on the important part. That's really what matrices do. The rest of you are like, we'll learn synthetic later this semester, because it's a stupid, powerful tool. Um, all right, so here's what a matrix is. If I have the equation, uh, the system of equations, uh, 2x plus y equals 7, uh, oh, what did I say? 11. What a matrix would say is, okay, do you have all the variables lined up? And do you have the equal signs lined up and do you have the numbers lined up? Yes, we have the X's are here, Y's are here, numbers are there, right? So then it says, okay, let's strip away the most important parts of this thing then. And it makes sense, you'll see why they have to be lined up. Because now this first column is gonna represent X's, the next column is gonna represent Y's, and the last column is gonna represent the answers. So I just put the coefficients. So this will be two, one, seven, 
And normally I draw a little line there. I don't think the book does, but when I was taught this, I was taught that, so I always do. It's part of my habit. Uh, and the la and this one's got to be what? One, one, one three, 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 eleven. Kick ass. Let me stop there for a second. And, and every single thing we do in mathematics could have been done a different way. And that's I, I, this is the second time I'm talking about my math 120 class. But it, one thing I do with them, I love that class, is we talk about different number bases, like the Egyptians and the and the ancient Chinese and what their numbers look like. And because our numbers look like one, two, three, but that's not how two could have looked. Two could have looked like this. That could have been two. If you were there that day, you thought, would it look like that? Well, that sounds all right. I'll be two. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is this is one way to represent this. This is another way to represent the same damn thing. Who cares? As long as you know how to work inside of each one of these. Whatever I'm allowed to do here, to this equation and that equation, I'm allowed to do to that row and that row. So for example, could I have written these the other way? Yes. So yeah, I'm totally allowed to turn these around. Because it's still the same damn thing, right? So what would that look like in the matrix? Just 1, 3, 11. 1, 3, 11. And 2, 1, 7. Right. Now, I gotta, I'm going to remind you at least one more time of this right now, and then I might say it again later. Because as a student, if I show you something, you want it to always be better than what we had before. This will not be. For a system of two variables, matrices are overkill. But why do I start with this? Because it's the easiest example just to get used to it, right? All right. So if you're starting like, why are we doing it that way? It was easy. It was, yeah, yeah. We're getting used to what a matrix is and how it works. Um, how would I start to solve this system, this, this uh, the equations here? What would I do? Or Let's kill the x's. Mm -hmm. What would I do? You would multiply this row by negative 2, right? Mm -hmm. And then you would add them together, right? You, you with me? Yes. All right. I'm going to slowly try to get you to the point where you're doing matrices quicker, the way they're supposed to be done. The first couple times I'm going to show you a long-ass way that I would hope to God you would never actually do. But I just want to make sure you're with me as to what's going on. Um, I can do the same thing with the matrix. I can multiply the first row by negative 2. What are you going to do? If so I would put a little note to myself. These notes are almost required. If you don't put them and you make a mistake, I'm not going to waste time trying to figure out what the hell you're trying to do. So these notes help you out and they help me out. So what do I mean? I, I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 2. Do you see that? That's what I'm going to do. So what do I get if I multiply row 1 by negative 2? Negative 2, negative 6, and negative 8. Cool. And then row 2, I'm going to leave alone. Now over here, if I did that, I get negative 2x minus 6y. And there's the coefficients, right? OK, good, good, good. If you've done matrices before, just hang out. You're probably bored to tears, but just hold on. And the second one, I leave alone, of course. And what would I do next over here? You would add them, right? So then I'm going to get negative 5y equals negative 15. Cool. Now the way we do it in a matrix is we replace an old equation with the better equation. This is better than either of these were. Why? There's only one variable. Exactly. So a matrix only keeps the best information. It overwrites the old information with the better information. So what I'm going to do here is, to represent what I just did here, I would say I'm going to take row 1 plus row 2 and put the answer in row 2. Give it a chance. Is there a reason why um, in the first matrices box you have um, 2x plus y and then x plus 3y? And then in the second box, you reverse the... Just to show you, you could. Oh. Yeah. And also, I'll get to the point where I tell you why it's important to have a one here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Stay with me now. So what do we get? We get negative 2, negative 6, negative 22. Yeah. And what do I get when I add these rows? Zero. 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 
Negative five. Negative fifteen. Cool. Now please, dear God, please stay with me. I'm doing more work than you really have to. I just want to make sure you understand the work that's going into this. We're going to do another example. I'm going to show you the kind of quicker way to do this. Hopefully you'll be able to handle that when we get there. And what can I do with each of these rows? Like row one and row two, to make, I can do something to both of them to make them look better. I can take row one and do what? Divide Yeah, row one divided by negative two. Because remember, I multiply by negative two over here. I can take row two and divide it by negative five. Let me say it again. Believe it or not, it's not enough that I've already said this. I'm doing more work than I really have to. Right? So some of you guys are like... I would have been done with the damn thing over here. Stupid matrix. But, so if I divide that by negative 2, I get 1, 3, 11. Divide that by negative 5, I get 1, 3. And what does this say if I translate it back into an equation? Y equals 3. Yeah, I get 0x plus y equals 3. So I get y is 3. I like it. Yes. See? Do you understand what I'm saying, everybody? I'm sorry. I'm not. Of course you did. Uh, two reasons. Uh, a, a matrix is never the better way to solve a system of two equations. And it just never is. So why am I doing it? Because it's a simpler, quicker example just to see how matrices work, right? Uh, exactly. Uh, secondly, I'm doing twice as much work as I really should have to. Matrices, you can make them much more efficient. I just want to show you every single thing that's going on. Yes, sir? Why did you like divide by negative two? Because I could. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, now watch. What does it mean when I get a zero? Why is that a good thing? Because what does that relate to? You killed a variable. And the whole problem with the system equations is there's too many freaking variables, right? So now watch, watch, watch. Uh, we're going to finish this one out, but I want you to see why this is the goal. Uh, so for a system of two equations, my goal is to get to here. And of course, that number sign just means whatever the number is, 7, negative 3. Because then I can say that x equals something, y equals something. Because I've killed an x and I've killed a y, right? So what's what what's there that I want to get rid of? What's not what's not right? The three should become a zero. If I can make the three become a zero, I'll know the answer. All right? And Rodney's like, just ask me, man. Right. <laughs> I love that. So how do I kill that three? Multiply the second row by negative three. See, now your ones become like your lasers. You could do surgery. I always think about that. They're lasers. You ever seen that video that you have the tumor and the laser goes in and kills the tumor and leaves the rest of your brain okay? So my one is my laser. It's going to kill that. Do I want to screw with that one? No, I want a one there, don't I? Where my goal is? Over there. I want a one here, but look, zero plus one is one. That's awesome. So the zero won't screw with that one. Okay, maybe. When we get to three variables, we really start to see what I'm talking about. Zeros are what are most important. Ones are the next most important thing because then I can make them become whatever I need you to kill the thing around it. So I'm going to multiply this row. Let me show you one 